Hey guys, this is Webpeak. Today I want to show you my solution for the problem 5 in IMO 2019. Since the problem is a bit long, I'm not going to read it. So see you later in the solutions. In order to provide you some intuition about the dynamics, I'm going to start with the following concrete example. At the beginning, there are in total 6 heads. So the first move is to turn over this coin indicated by the arrow. After flipping it, we get a head instead of a tail, which means we have increased the number of heads by 1. So the next move is to turn over the coin at the seventh position, which is the coin at the right hand side. Now if we think there is an arrow indicating the current position, then the arrow is going to move to the right hand side if the current position is occupied by a tail. Similarly, if the current coin is a head, then flipping it over will decrease the number of head by one. So the indicator arrow is going to move to the left hand side. Personally, I find this indicator very helpful for me to visualize the problem. Basically, there is this arrow moving on consecutive coins, and the game ends if and only if we achieve the zero position. So now let me show you a small animation of the entire process on this particular example. As you may notice in the animation, there are a lot of long sequence of consecutive tails or heads in the intermediate steps. So let me go through the operations again and try to understand this phenomenon. The starting position is a tail, so we are going to move to the right hand side. And then we meet a tail again, so we move further to the right. Now we encounter a head which will change the direction of our indicator. After flipping the coin, the indicator moves back to the left hand side. Notice that the coins in the previous position have already been flipped. So we are going to keep moving to the left hand side until we meet a tail, which is this coin at the fourth position. Next, we change the direction again and move forward until we meet a head. So now I'm sure that you understand the phenomenon. We keep moving until we hit something that allows us to change the direction. And eventually we go back to the zero position and the game ends. So the important coins are those who change the direction of the moving flow. Now let me mark down their positions in order to figure out some useful information. So the first change of direction happens here at this head. Then we move back to the left hand side until this tail at the fourth position. And then we move forward again until this head and then all the way back to the first tail. And finally we arrive at the last head and go back to zero. So there is a funny separation happening here. Indeed. On the right hand side, all the heads change the direction. In contrast, on the left hand side, all the tails change the direction. This is indeed not an artifact. Let's start it further. 
Now let me introduce some additional notation to help the analysis. First, we put a left bracket on all the tiles with position smaller or equals to k. Here k is the initial number of heads in the sequence. So we put a left bracket here, here, and here, including the initialization position. So it is clear that this position corresponds to the change of direction on the left-hand side. Similarly, we are going to put a right bracket on all the heads with position strictly larger than k. Then they correspond to the change of direction on the right-hand side. So here, here, and here. Now we can think the problem as an uh, arrow bouncing around the brackets and we want to move to the zero position, which means that we need to have as many left bracket as the number of the right bracket. And this is what I'm going to show next. The number of the left bracket equals to the numbers of the right bracket. This is indeed a simple counting problem. Let me denote the number of left bracket by L, which is the number of tiles in the first k positions. In other words, the rest k minus L coins in these first positions must be all heads. Together with the fact that there are in total k heads in the entire sequence, this implies that the number of heads with a position strictly larger than k equals to the difference between k and k minus l, which is exactly l. So we are done. Now let's attack the second part of the problem. We want to determine the average or sum of operations among all possible configurations. Since this number is not easy to evaluate by counting, it is natural to consider an induction and try to build some useful relationship between n and n plus 1. Imagine we have n plus 1 coins now, let's say tau, head, head, and go on. What I'm going to do is to focus on this last coin and try to remove it. Because if I remove one coin, then there are only n coins left and we could apply the induction, right? So the easy case is when the last coin is a tail. Then we can easily remove it because we never meet this coin during the entire operation. The reason is that the last change of direction is a white bracket, which needs to be a head. And after that, we go all the way down to zero. So we never get a chance to uh, go beyond the last head and hence never operate on this last coin. This means that we can simply remove it and uh, the number of operations remain the same. More precisely, if I denote CM plus 1, the entire sequence, the number of operations LCM plus 1 equals to the number of operations LCN, where CN is the first n coins. So this is the simple case. If the last coin is a head, we cannot directly remove it, because at some point we need to turn it over. So the key observation is that when this happens, the first n coins must be all heads. And then we turn the last coin over and uh, go all the way back to zero by flipping all the coins from head to tail. So the total number of operations is the number of operations from changing the first n coins to all heads plus the final n plus 1 operations. So now we just need to worry about this first part, how to change the first n coins to all heads. Well, this sounds familiar, right? Because the original game is to change cn into all tails. Here, instead, we need to change it to all heads. 
So let's make a comparison. Remind that we want to apply induction, so somehow we need to turn the problem on the left hand side to a problem on the right hand side. More precisely, given a configuration Cn, I want to construct a Cn prime such that moving from Cn to all heads is similar to move Cn prime to all tails. The first clear difference is on the final state. The left problem ends with all heads, while the right problem ends with all tails. Then the natural idea to obtain Cn prime is to interchange T and H in Cn. But this is not enough. Indeed, there is another critical difference on the direction of the last move. For the problem on the left hand side, the last move is to move to m plus 1, where the last head is living. However, the last move on the right problem is to go back to 0, which means it is moving to the left hand side. So the orientation of the operation have been reversed. And this motivates us to reverse the ordering of the sequence in our transformation. First, we interchange head to tail, tail to head in the configuration of Cn. So this gives us the following sequence. And next, we are going to reverse the ordering. So we turn the entire sequence around. And finally, we get the Cn prime we are going to work on. So we will play the game on this new sequence Cn prime. And my claim is that the number of operations of sending Cn prime to all tails is the same as the number of operations sending Cn plus 1 to all heads. In this example, there are seven heads in Cn prime which means we will start at this point indicated by the arrow. What I'm going to do next is to play simultaneously on Cn prime and Cn plus 1. So let's go. As you may notice in the animation, the indicator arrow in the first game is synchronized with the arrow in the second game. Indeed, their position k and k' prime always sums up to n plus 1. Let me briefly explain to you why this is true. First, at initialization, k is the number of heads in cn plus 1 and k prime is the number of heads in cn prime. Since we have interchanged h to t in order to obtain cn prime, this number equals to the number of tails in cn, which is again the number of tails in cn plus 1, because the last coin is a head. Therefore, k plus k prime equals to n plus 1. Moreover, we saw that the coin indicated at k prime is the opposite value of the coin indicated at k. This is because we have reversed the ordering of the sequence. So the k position in Cn has been sent to the n plus 1 minus k position in Cn prime, which is k prime. And finally, since we have interchanged t to h, they must have opposite values. A consequence of this observation is that when we are moving to the right hand side in the first sequence, then necessarily we are going to move to the left hand side in the second sequence. And this implies that the sum k plus k prime is maintained along the entire operation. In particular, if all the coins in Cn plus 1 are head, then k must be at the position n plus 1. This implies that k prime is 0, meaning that all the coins in Cn prime 
is tail. So this implies that the number of operations sending cn plus 1 to all heads is equal to the number of operations sending cn1 to all tails. Finally, let me summarize the results. If the last coin of the n plus 1 sequence is a tail, then the number of operations on cn plus 1 equals to the number of operations on cn. Otherwise, if the last coin is a head, then the number of operations on cn plus 1 is the number of operations on cn prime plus n plus 1. And this cn prime is constructed by reversing the ordering and interchanging t to l. It is easy to see that this transformation is bijective. Therefore, if we note as n as the sum of operations on all the configurations with length n, then we have as n plus 1 equals to 2 times as n, so an as n from the first case and another as n from the second case, plus n plus 1 times the number of cases where the last coin is ahead, which is 2 to the times n. And together with the fact that S1 equals to 1, we can easily prove that Sn equals to n times n plus 1 over 4 multiplied by 2 to the n. So finally, the average is n times n plus 1 over 4. So hope you enjoy the video. This is Webpeak. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.